Broadcasting live from Hollywood, we're actually at a different studio today, and it is my pleasure, a really true pleasure, to uh, bring to you one of my favorite people, uh, one of the, the smartest broads wow. in town, the lovely Liz Heller, hey. ladies and gentlemen. Oh my God, we have all these, all these uh, venture capitalists in the audience today. Um, all the venture capitalists, pitch. and they wave dollars. <laughs> it's different than underwear for other guests that we've yes, had. Yes, yes. Um, Seth had underwear. <laughs> Seth okay. had underwear. So uh, it is uh, an unusual day for the uh, for the world of Schwartz Tech Cat Show, um, telling you tech trends that impact your business because it is not boiling hot outside. And for the last two months, we've literally been living on the sun. There's a rumor of rain on Wednesday. No. Mm -hmm. Get out. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. The whole town's going to fall apart. Because <laughs> uh, L.A. doesn't know how to drive in uh, drizzle, I think it'll be. No, nothing. There's very, very no drizzly. driving in the rain. No, no driving. No, it no. doesn't happen. But I wanted to jump right into our show because Liz is um, somebody that everybody should just meet and talk to because she, um, she knows so many interesting things. And like many of our colleagues that we bring to the show, she has a special sauce, which I think you'll... Um, You'll ascertain. <laughs> oh, that was my $5 word today, John. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so Liz is, is basically one of the top marketing and social media experts around. And I know that you are a widely recognized media innovator. You speak on a lot of panels. You have a lot of big clients. Um, I know Tom Shoes is one of your banner clients. You're yes. involved in television and film in brand engagement. You're doing a lot of interesting things. And you really are one of those people that when – new technology happens or new trends happen, you, you implement. Um, and we're going to start first with talking just about Buzz, Buzz Tone, which was the company that you've been working with um, for the last chunk of years, your company. Yes. And I know that's evolving. But tell us what you've been doing with Buzz Tone. Well, I founded Buzz Tone quite a while ago, really based on coming from entertainment and, and uh, music in particular, and all, but also film, uh, and, the, and the idea that it was so necessary to be able to be resourceful to get anything to happen. So in the early days of BuzzTone, we were much more of an experiential kind of grassroots, how do we figure this out? And, and the same was true in digital. So grassroots was really the same idea. It's like, how do we spread buzz? Although that is not where the origin of the name of the company actually came from. It's actually the sound that a horn makes, and it was the only sound that was kind of available. It was a buzz tone. But oh, uh, interesting. Yeah. I didn't yep. know that. Yep. Okay. But it was right. the same exact week that I think I can't remember which it was Forbes or somebody had this big article cover story about like buzz marketing. It couldn't have been more perfect, although it had nothing to do with it. Yeah. So, <laughs> but nobody uh, has to know that. Nobody needs to know that. Right. And it's Until kind now. Of the, exactly. <laughs> I've just revealed it. Right. Uh, but I've actually, I used to get a huge kick out of listening to different members of my staff explain what the name meant. And it was always a different one and it actually had nothing to do with the actual one. But it was Even how they I told people, it. they still would <laughs> interpret it that way. So it you know it evolved into a lot of different kinds of combinations and partnerships and figuring out what technology or what uh, brand might be perfect with another brand to realize whatever their goal was. And years of trying to explain what that was, I finally decided to call it alchemy. And so I uh, I had a, f a movie that I really loved and adored that Albert Brooks made uh, called Modern Romance, and so I decided oh, to I call it that. Adventures in Modern Alchemy, <laughs> <laughs> which so is that really was a com to combining a lot of different things to True. make magic. To make is about people, ideas, companies, hopefully right. that matter. That's a big which part for me. Which is very modern, even still. Mm -hmm. And you've been doing this yeah. for a long time. So can you give us an example of like what you would typically do for a client? And I know Tom's is one of your big clients, and we all love the story of. Tom's. Tom. So how are you, how have you been working with them? Well, my relationship with Tom's evolved in it's it's a little bit different some, than some of the others where it's not. Sometimes it's project related, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's a retainer, and sometimes it's kind of it takes a while to figure out what it is. But I really always felt like the key to it was to be productive and needed. I didn't want to be one of those. Uh, agencies or people or have my clients feel like okay they, we took care of everything and we still what are we doing with her now what do we what are we paying for what's our what's our company doing right so I really wanted to make that sort of evolutionary and if at the 
end of the project, they felt like they had what they needed and they were ready to go, whether it was staffing or moving on to the next thing, or we needed to build a website for them in order to be able to do e-commerce or whatever it was, that they would then be able to look at, we'd be look, able to look at each other and say, great, let's move on or let's do the next project. And so I met Tom's kind of in that same vein about almost eight years ago now. Mm -hmm. And at that time, it evolved from things like we have a pop-up store to music to e-commerce. And then it became about social and search and uh, affiliate. And are, were you the partner that was helping them do the pop-up store? No, the pop-up store existed. And they said, you seem like you know everybody. Uh, and can that you was get the, us? Can you get us people there? Can you get us? Can you actually not even people that? Can you create some events for us? Okay. And so it. I said, okay, yeah, sure. I called some people, and Liz Dubelman, who I think might be a mutual friend of ours, was launching something, and we threw a party for her book, you know, and those kinds of things. And I was like, this was it was really for right, fun. You actually do. I mean, people say you're the most connected person in the world, but you actually are the most connected oh. person in the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's there's a lot of degrees, but not so many for some people. Like I but, like including half of our audience are yeah. people that you know, right? <laughs> I do see some familiar faces. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but I, I well, part of actually the way I started BuzzTown, I probably left that part out, was I actually read The Tipping Point oh, um, okay. by, by Seth Godin before it had actually, of oh, Seth Godin, oh my uh, God, Max, Malcolm Gladwell, can yeah. you please cut you're, that You're out? as tired like, as I am. Wow. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that would be so horrible. They're both my heroes. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so Malcolm Gladwell had written this book, and I actually was also a sociology major at UCLA, although I never really felt like I was actually utilizing it for anything, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden I realized everything I read the doing. book, everything I was doing, and I realized I wanted to have a company made up of connectors, mavens, and salespeople, mm -hmm. which was basically kind of a big part of the book. And so I started the book, and I kind of watched it tip in real time. It was very exciting because it hadn't tipped yet, and so that was the basis of the company, actually. Mm -hmm. And so that ob obviously is a very broad definition, but I think it was also about even when you think about trends in tech if I said to you today and some of the behaviors are exactly the same they're just manifested with different names so if I said to you we're still very much chatting with people mm -hmm. we're just not doing it in a chat room right, you know right. so and, and so to say that we were like well we'll do chat room seating you know if I said that to you now you'd look at me and what did you just wake up from a coma you mm -hmm. know it, it's not and yet it's many of the kinds of things that we're looking to accomplish as human beings even within that are very similar the behaviors are still there. They just have different names and different technologies, different methods of distribution, different paths. So to, you to need to, that. you as as Liz Heller, need to know what all the choices are so that when a client or a potential client comes to you and says, I want to do this, and you go, oh, well, let's use this. Correct. And then you make your five phone calls. Because when we worked on an event, it was about, um, first of all, setting up a panel of great women, women leaders um, to help raise awareness about a STEAM program that was launching for Samsung. And you filled that room. Like, that room got filled right. just from, like, a couple of phone calls. And I was like, where did these people come from? It was like a clown car, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> so do you, I mean, do you keep this in cra in crazy contact sheet, or is that just I a skill set? I have a database set? that messes up every device I've ever had, because it's very big. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times, it's not even always up to date, but I'll meet somebody, and I'll be like, hey, you look so familiar. And then I'll go back to my database, and I'll see, oh my gosh, that's you know so-and-so from when I met them. Right. Keeping it up has been difficult because of multiple devices and platforms and technologies. But uh, I'll give you an example. Philip Rosedale has been involved in many amazing technologies, including Second Life, and I had met him uh, and I think this was first company, and I kept thinking he looks so familiar. And I thought, well, maybe it's probably because I read every tech thing, you know. And then I went back to my database, and I saw this address, and I and I said, do, "Are you? Is this your address?" He goes, "How do you possibly have that? How can you remember me from college?" And then he'd had like four very successful businesses mm -hmm. in between. Uh, so I, you know, like I said, it's not always up to date, but it's super important. But I think that's actually one of the trends that is really happening. And if you listen to a lot of different thought leaders in a lot of different ways, it, including whether or not ultimately becomes sort of scientific in some respects, but uh, your network is so important. Mm -hmm. And for me, I have a network because I love people and mm -hmm. I love connecting people, mm -hmm. but it is super important to have a network. And it also plays out even into uh, as old as you get, how important your social ties are to your uh, sort of mind and how you even age, just on, just on a very personal level. Right, just like a having a world, important. having yes. a, a world. So having let me ask you this, because one of the things that I've always been working on as a consultant, and a lot of my consultant friends, when they make the change from working at a large corporation, where you just have this check coming every week, to being independent, where now you're still making the same connections, but no one's kind of paying for it. So how have you 
taken introducing people and made it a business? Well, I've gone in and out of corporate life, actually. Uh, and I'm not, I actually, li I actually like corporations because I think it's, I think they do a lot of good things that some people don't even really acknowledge them yeah. for. Yeah. They also do a air lot of Air conditioning I like in corporations. <laughs> <laughs> corporations always have the best yes. air conditioning. They do. And they have a culture. And sometimes, yes. it, sometimes it's not so great. But, but I was lucky because I was always involved in entertainment cultures and those were pretty fun. Um, but I think... It, it, there is a moment when you realize, uh, so when I was, it, let's say the last corporate job I had, if you will, and I don't want us to make it sound like Capital Records was very corporate corporate, but yes. it definitely was a corporation. I was part of uh, EMI at the time, and uh, you know, I'd go in and I would just sort of make things happen and make you know, creations and partnerships and things, and I was working in what was then the new media department, uh, launching some of the, basically one of the first websites ever. Somebody just documented that, it was an interesting story. but. I, you know, and I would make connections, and I would, didn't matter to me because my paycheck wasn't sort of dependent upon that. It was just about my right. Deal. You I were like it. you were basically stirring it up. Right. You were your role was to stir it up, which, yeah. ironically, most of the folks I've been bringing in here, that is their role at some yeah. point at some yeah. company to wait, yeah to, to sort stir of it think up. outside. For me, it was actually about thinking about technology and how it could work within music. Mm -hmm. And it was it was early in the space. There wasn't quite the sort of doomsday world of you know MP3 and Napsters and file mm -hmm. trading and everything else that happened after that. But I was going to say that when I went out um, on kind of my own and started my own company, it was very difficult. It still is difficult. But I listened to people like Keith Ferrazzi, and if you mm -hmm. haven't had Keith on, he's really great. And one of the things that he talks about is leading with generosity. And I just believe in that anyway. So, Oh, that's so interesting. So, like, the universe will reward you for absolutely. just being open and... Absolutely, and leading with generosity. Yeah. And I think it, it's... it's And there's an also a really great book called Give and Take. Mm -hmm. And it's a similar thing. I mean, if you really are a giver, then you're not really thinking about it as either a quid pro quo or, you know, what you're am I You're just doing get? what you think is the right thing exactly. to do. Exactly, exactly. Right, and not getting small-minded about the, the yes. basics not locking yourself into that or I look at people sometimes and I think about like this problem I've got I'm this I'm going to this because I'm gonna have access and access is incredibly important there's no question about it but if your agenda is access and your focus is I'm gonna meet those people I don't really want to talk to anybody else you're probably gonna miss meeting the most important person right. for your career right, right, or your right, life right. and you know some people think that about a dinner party like well oh my gosh I'm gonna sit next to someone so you know. and usually that's the person that really turns out to be a real powerful connection that you could never have expected yeah. and so I have I and I love people anyway but I I don't go into any of those things with that kind of expectation I don't zone in on it. Sometimes I do think it would be better for me to be more focused about that because the other thing happens, which is, oh, uh, you know, actually somebody was joking about this the other day and saying that they should they want to start sending your welcome cards because you do so so things for people and they right. don't even remember they don't or say thank you or tell you that it even happened or tell you that it happened and, and that they just made a fortune exactly. from your introduction <laughs> exactly and I do a toss lot of me things. a bone <laughs> and I also feel like just something exactly so it's, how about thank you or you know it's yeah. okay I, I don't do it for that reason but it would right. just be nice um, <laughs> but I think that when you when you when you're when you're in that sphere and you're moving quickly you know all the time through a lot of different um, opportunities and events and putting people together those connections sometimes don't even manifest or what for a long time for those people or it's the people right. they introduce to the people that right it's an it's I'm not a gonna long play, tale. Yeah, it's I don't a keep score score that way right so right um, but I think there are there are different models that I've looked at uh, in evolving how to monetize it a little bit better and I think the first thing is also recognizing like certain people are going to come into your world and they're really going to be, I don't know any other way to say it, but they're going to be like an energy sucker and they're mm -hmm. going to just drain you of everything. And if you sort of set that up a little bit differently, like, like hey, my dentist, yes, <laughs> <I'm> just <kidding. laughs> yes exactly. Okay. Just like your dentist. I, what's that name? I don't want to go there. No. Um, but you, yeah, I think getting wiser and sort of sharper about um, why somebody is actually coming into your world or what are they really asking and what right. I think there's there's a lot of interesting examples of this some people don't realize too that when somebody asks you to do something and you say yes I'll make that introduction or yes I'll connect you to that or yes let me think about that project or let me think about what technology would be great for you or what platform would be good for you or whatever you're thinking about they don't realize that you've you've taken on a huge responsibility of taking care of that. It always takes longer than you think and everything right, else. Right, right. And so to them, they it's the most important thing in the world. But to you, it's one of a thousand things that's on your list. Right, right. So the power of setting expectation and the power of saying, 
you know, I can do that for you, but here's how much I'll do for you. So it was painful in learning for me to finally say to somebody, yes, I'll recommend you for that opportunity, but you need to write me exactly what you want me to say because right. that was what killed me. Right. And I'd run out of time because right. I'd sit down and be like, oh, I promised Lori I'd send that email about, you know, and I just was too tired. Right. I think one, that's a know, great point. So, so set expectations. Even if you're going to be open and welcoming, that's the give and take too is give me, help me do right. this for you. Exactly. And if you can't be, if you can't sit and write that for yourself, right. then it's unlikely that you're going to, you know what I mean? Why should I? I mean, right. in that sense, and I don't mean it like a, you know, a, an eye for an eye. No, I'm but saying, you're, why, I to don't your even point, you're busy too. So yeah. let it, because uh, one of the things I find myself saying to people is they'll write me and say, I see on LinkedIn, you're connected to so-and-so and they have a job. Can you connect me? And I don't even know the person. I'm right. just connected somehow. Yep. And I'll say, I don't really know them I'm sorry you know I I'm not going to pass you on to them because that wouldn't be integral you know right. is that the right word integrity Integ it wouldn't have yeah, yeah it wouldn't have integrity know. whatever it is you know what I mean <laughs> could have been the other one too <laughs> it wouldn't have been cool and and because I don't feel right recommending to someone I don't even know someone I do know right so uh, that's my conversation but I think I like the expectations point better because okay. I think if you set expectations in general across all of your life you won't be disappointed, and the people you're helping won't right. be disappointed. Exactly, and yeah. and, I, so, and I've so, used so that. It, I've, it took a long time to get to the place of. It used to be the same in music. People, can I give you a t you know? Can I give you a tape just to date myself? Or can yes. I give you a file? <laughs> and and I would say yes, but don't expect to get it back. And I have no idea if they're going to respond. And it's completely unsolicited. It's not. I'm not in A and R, the department that used to sign music. And so yeah, sure, but this is what you should expect. You know? So so be generous, set expectations, and and what's another tip in this crazy space? I think I think be authentic about the connection because okay. for me it's like I've done a lot of different things and I could have spent a lot of my time just keeping up with the, the connections I thought were important. Mm -hmm. But instead, I just look at them and think, this is realistic. And so, it, again, it plays back to the same thing. So if somebody asks you to do something with somebody that maybe you don't know that well, you have, you just say, look, I'm, I'm authentically telling you, yes, I know that person, but I don't know them that well, that I'd be like your LinkedIn thing. Yeah. Like, I, you know, I wouldn't really feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if it's somebody you know, well, it would be brilliant for that job. You might write and say, we don't know each other that well, but this person asked you got to meet this person. you got to meet right. this person. And I, I have that happen to me probably more with Tom's than any other event brand company famous person everyone, whatever I've ever everyone known. Everyone wants to be involved with Tom's. Or their kids. Right. You know right. everyone wants to get an opportunity to work at Tom's stuff. and so I always say apply the official way because mm -hmm. that's the first thing and, and if I know somebody in the department you're looking for I'll be happy to forward that and they can you know people are sort of grown up so you make their own decision about a person if you know but I, I do get a lot of that I think partially because in the early days of social media we were so excited we said yes to everybody people like you and I and not right, everybody right. no you no, well, you're I right. was like oh those are, that is that why I'm great. so tired <laughs> <laughs> no you're right because you everything was interesting everything was new and you didn't yeah, know where anything would lead it was going to be and you right. know, it all looked amazing especially like in the LinkedIn and you know whatever and then yeah. LinkedIn be, which I'm a big fan of LinkedIn but LinkedIn became this very powerful network for right for a career and suddenly you're like oh I don't know do I actually know that person you know right so, I do wish now I could go back and like clean it up yeah. but that in itself would be like a month I don't have yeah exactly you know what I mean exactly. so so um I wanted to segue us into one of our favorite segments here at the tech cat show <laughs> and I'm um, looking over at John to, <laughs> which is our top trend segment our top like what is a tech trend or um you know what, what's something that you're, you've been seeing that's out there that you're really turned on by there we go <laughs> Sometimes it's like very sharp. Sometimes it's kind of like an acid trip, like that just was. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what the music is. I like that. <laughs> like, is there that anything? Makes me think of something transformational. That's right. Um, what transformational technology trend have you been experiencing, or what are you seeing out there that you know comes to mind all the time for clients? You know, anything? well, mobile always comes yes. to mind, yeah. and, and how we're going to achieve whatever the goals are for for your company or brand in mobile. Uh, and you mean mobile, when you say mobile, you mean just some, on a, some screen, not in the home? Correct. Yeah, okay. or I, yes, I would say tablet, tablet any kind phone, of device. whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. exactly. 
Um, but I also had mobile vehicles out on the road for years, too, so I'm still having to think about that. That's right. I don't mean those kind. Yeah. Um, uh, but I think uh, it's one of the things I think is interesting, and I did talk about this a long time ago, and it's kind of become a, a sort of an interesting topic now, which is what I kind of look at as like O to O, which is online to offline. Okay. And I think there's a, a, lar a lot of sort of movement in this space to – a, bring back experiences. I've also noticed that there's certain behaviors that are coming back. I don't know about you, but I've noticed my phone rings all the time now. People are, for a long time, it was like, yeah, I'll text you, I'll email you. Now all of a sudden, it's like, I'm just going to call people you. People are calling they're you calling now. They're calling yeah. you. I mean, they're mm -hmm. calling. So that's kind of an old behavior that's that's come do, back. Do people call you out of the blue and um, oh, just because the they've gotten your phone number from somewhere? I, all the time. I still find that shocking, even though Me too. you're glad that maybe one of those 10 people called, but yeah. it's so shocking. It's yeah. like an invasion of privacy or something. Yeah, because you're not used to your phone ringing. It's the last yeah. few years. It just was not yeah. the thing. The it was main, all uh, about texting. Thing. It was all yeah. about texting and yeah. emailing and every other kind of yeah. uh, communication that was digital. And when so, somebody FaceTimes you, like you FaceTimed me earlier. And that was a complete accident. That was because, well, oh, I was not too. driving and texting. <laughs> I, was, I pulled over. That happens to me all the time, too. But what I noticed was I was like holding my phone like this. And I remember thinking, oh, what do I look like for a second? I could never because, see you, you by the way. I only saw part of your arm. Well, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the other thing now, too, is we were saying we work from home, so you don't get your stuff together as much as you would if you were yeah. out. In but, on, but I think one of the things that's interesting about, that's a trend also, yeah. is the people working from home, obviously, there's huge numbers on all different kinds of uh, processes. That I think the guy from IBM that I saw speak last week said some some giant percentage of their sales force, it was like 80% or whatever, is working from, work home? from home, work from home. And is that because companies are trying, I mean, opposite of, say, Yahoo, who said, you better get your butts in seats here? Right. And I think that was a purpose-driven yes. point. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but um. Is it because it's better overhead for these companies, or is it because staff is everywhere and they don't need to come into? Yeah, I office? do think that a lot of people work in a real virtual, mm -hmm. you know, co company environment. But then I also think that, and this is just my theory. Yes. But I think that we have invested as working people mm -hmm. so much in our home situation and we have fast bandwidth we have servers we have access we have multiple devices we i mean we are prepared to work at home in a very you know uh kind of you, nobody knows where you are you know and i don't want to say right. invisible because right. i don't feel like we're invisible but i mean in this way that's it's it really doesn't matter do you ever ask anybody hey are you at the office i mean no one not... seems shocked anymore when like my five-year-old comes home at three o'clock and on a big important call and they hear her voice go hi everyone and nobody yeah. says, "Oh, you're at home." You're at, right. What? Nobody no seems shocked. Weird. They just go, oh, "How old is she?" And then I, and then we move on. Yeah. It's not like this shame. Totally. You know exactly. what I mean? Where I think a couple of years ago there was a little sort of don't let the secret out. Right. That you know you're working in your home office. Exactly. Well, right? you still have that too about like don't let the secret out that this is all outsourced to some other country. You right. Know, like, right. Right. And programmers generally work only X amount of hours before they really need. A break, right, you know, right, right, or even per day, right. And so that environment is wherever that's most productive for them. I mean, you look at most of tech companies; they have sort of open hours. As long as you get the work done, right, or you'll come right. at this hour. You along with that ma hour. masseuses and laundry, exactly. And, yeah. So that sort of modern HR, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I think, uh, I think, and I think the extension to the home is part of that. Yeah. So I, and that I actually there are times though when I think it's there's nothing that can possibly replace human kind of contact. Yes. Uh, yeah. In fact, that's one of the ideas that. I'm thinking about as my next is uh, to go back into an office well no I'm creative? actually thinking about something I call it uh, this is something I was going to have lunch with you about oh okay <laughs> all right let's talk about it I now. don't think I'm going <laughs> to do it quite yet but, is it, but what I was going to say was this idea of what I call a micro conference this okay. idea of okay. co uh, of of coming to a place where people are all together in a space that are singularly focused on whatever that company is mm -hmm. but sharing knowledge with experts about the, a topic that okay. I call a critical business driver, okay. not a future thing. It's, and this is part of O to O. It's the same yeah. thing. It's like you can take a lot of webinars online, and you, I, I, I learn a lot that way. And you yeah. can do a lot of teleseminars, and you can, you know, go and look at every archived reference of something, and you can do online training, and you can, and you, and you can go to a conference, which obviously they're they're bigger than ever yeah. conferences. Yeah. But when you come home from that conference, what actually happens? kind of nothing you know yeah, except right. for the person who might have made some good contacts and while right. they're at that company that's super important but bringing people together in an offline way to really share knowledge and understanding of something that is absolutely critical so if we're looking at an e-commerce thing and i say to you you know Lori, uh, pink 
buttons tend to return 2x conversion. You know, would mm -hmm. you try that today? I mean, you would say yes. Yeah, How yeah. fast can I get rid of my green one? You right, know, right, just right. to see. Yeah. So, so that and that's what I call critical business driving. Because if somebody doesn't click to check out, then that's a sale you haven't made. So for and a is e it commerce a, business, that's important. Is there a? Because this is the other thing I used to find is I would have um, when I was working at the agency, and I would have meetings or be on panels with other people in my role, but at other agencies, and they would often say to me, "I can't share that information with you because it's proprietary." And I would be like, "Come on, everyone knows what you're doing." Right. <laughs> you know. What last I mean? week, uh, last week I hosted a lunch with a, a technology company called Qubit, who I, I do not work with, but I really love their platform. And we taught we a uh, woman that I work with often, and I did a uh, kind of. There was two different parts to the uh, lunch. One was a talk about BB the website and the woman who is running it, and all of the different things that they do to merchandise it, optimize it, and maximize it, and what Qubit has done for them. So that was about the closest to the sales pitch part of it. And then my friend and I did one on, what, are you really prepared for a crisis? And we were talking about every kind of crisis you could you know, imagine, whether it was a social media fail or whether it was like, oh my gosh, we just got on the biggest television show and the server went down and we were so unprepared. Right, right, And so, right. and we sort of talked about it in a bunch of different ways and some real, I did a lot of case studies and then we took questions from, from the, from the audience, the audience, the people that were at the lunch. The audience. The How's the audience, audience doing, yeah, by the way? They are doing good. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear them cheer? I just want to, yeah, there it goes. I just want to make sure you guys are out there. Because I did see somebody writing a check to you. Oh, okay. there you go. Did you know what my ask was um, <laughs> the applause light came on exactly well anyway so we were we were we were sort of uh having this conversation about this and the woman from bb who was really great was talking a lot about um sort of this real-time need to be kind of merchandising and and be on top of it and looking at what sort of trends are happening every minute of the day and they launched like i think she said like two products a day but the point i was making at the end of it was all of her sort of quote competitors that were yeah. in the audience which were other e-commerce brands uh denim brands you know all kinds of uh, accessory brands beauty brands etc all were just astonished at how much she revealed right, right and right. yet to me it felt like a great sharing you know so i think it's kind of relative you know yeah. some people are just more private than others and that's how they feel, and that's fine. You right. know, and and other they, people they are more sort of like, said hey. themselves. Yeah. Do you think that um, uh, just the sort of um, on the same topic of online to offline, but do you think that women, you know, just because you and I have talked about this before, and there's a lot of chatter on Facebook right now about conferences and women paneling, and I always try to try and panel that, but do you think women do approach networking and connecting differently than men do? Yes, you know, hundred percent. And how is it? Like, what I mean, I think it? the first thing is, I personally am a believer in the conversation about women. It's it's about changing the conversation. It's not to exclude men. That's super important because I think that we tend we to need them. We need them. Yeah. And I think what we're all we're, we're married just saying, to we just them. We want to be them. equal. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're talking about 50, 50, right. 50. But I think uh, so. I think, but there are certain skills that men have and there are certain skills that women have and that we utilize with much more confidence than men and they have some that they utilize probably with more confidence than most right, women not right, all women look right. at how many women ceos are coming along and yes. some of them are obviously the biggest companies and yep yep so uh yeah but i think women are socialized you know differently right, and they right, grow right. up to be more social um but they also have other issues because of that as well they're probably uh, they get themselves, I think, sometimes into trouble faster than men. On right, because I was I was reading, um, well, two things. One is for that panel that we did. That one of the topics was that women to get too women leaders get too emotionally involved in their staff, and that they aren't able to really like just, you know, be a leader and not like be their friend. And that who who was it? Uh, the film, it? The, the Linda Linda Opes. Opes yeah. Linda Opes said that the best thing you can do for raising young girls is put them on sports teams, right? Because team behavior is how women should manage. Which is you don't choose someone to be on first base because they're your friend. Right. You choose them because they have the skill set, and everyone understands that. And there's not, you know, there may be hurt feelings because that person isn't a good first baseman, and so they didn't get picked. But ultimately, there's a logic to it. It's not, you know, emotional. It's the right sound choice to make. And women have a better time in grasping that than in just making hardcore decisions like some men do. 
I, you, yes, you I, think I, true? I, yeah, I do agree with that. So you I think sports is like a good metaphor for I think for sports is kids? a great metaphor for kids. And I think team playing, team everything is great for kids. You know, getting, uh, getting women in business to think more like that. Yes. You know. And um, I think, I think that, I mean, I thought about that when she said it. I thought, well, God, I wish I had been on a team. You yeah. Know? Like, yeah. I am a team player and I prefer to be part of a team. I don't actually love the solo concept yeah, yeah. Um, but and I, and I, I was a manager I that, that, that was so maternal yeah you know um, and for a long time it was important because I was uh, you know building this thing that had never been built before and I needed to create a family environment but then later down the road it became problematic and it was a great learning for me not to you know maternalize all right. the time you know which yeah. is hard for us yes you it know? is very hard because um, th those th that estrogen is so powerful <laughs> But is there is there any technology that you see bubbling up that you think is going to like blow everything away? You know, like a lot of people have talked about beaconing that they yeah. think beaconing. I is think beaconing is huge. I, I, so I that's love another it. big one. For I, you. I have a couple. Yes, it is one for me, and I have uh, two or three different companies that I advise on, uh, advise w for, and also that or that I work with, of which the. When that takes off and the connections actually are working, I think at the level where we, I mean, this has yeah. been talked about in a hundred again, yeah, there's a hundred different it's, ways. It's starting to happen. Early yeah. and it's finally here, right? You know? right. And it's not just whether it's any kind of near field communication, whatever it is, it's finally going to connect dots. And I think the reason that that matters is because it's going to integrate with either a touch point that is important for a, and I think it does connect to Odo again, but mm -hmm. because it's the touch point that says, oh, that is where the person is deciding what they're going to be doing, where they're going, what they're seeing, what they're, you know, can I divert them? Can I connect them? Can I tell them that there's this other awesome event party, whatever happening a right. block away, you know, or this is a sale that's happening right now, or this food is fresh, right? I mean, I can think of a million things, but I think that when that, when those touch points are really connected to the person and the decisions they're making at that time, or the decisions they're about to make, but it's connected to that, then I think... Um, you're going to see that start to really happen. And it, again, it's really connecting human beings in an offline space for most of it. I mean, you're driving right, so somebody to something. And the digital connection to the offline is so people can track what's happening in offline because, right, right isn't that yes. the most frustrating that's, that's thing? That's a very big piece of it. Everyone's it, frustrated that they don't really know what's happening correct. when someone's not online. Correct. So. And I think, I, and one of the companies I work with is very, very invested in this space and thinking about a lot. They have, they've already built an enterprise platform for, uh, you know, tracking like how how many miles will somebody drive to a movie theater? But once they get there, they don't necessarily know everything. They know more than most people so far. But there's always that little bit of behavior that I hope will always be a little bit unmeasurable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, um, you know, but... Uh, that emotional moment. That, that emotional moment, that je ne sais quoi, that, you know, like, still allows you to have some freedom to be, you know, who you yeah. are in the world. I mean, I get what so frustrated do. when the tech isn't where I need it to be. Yeah. Like, my expectations are, like, sky high at this point, and things aren't there yet. Right. So I'm always, like, you know, yeah. getting so, so frustrated. And I actually think that's true of a lot of millennials who's who just expect things to work. Right. You know, they Very just much so. But then I also, I've started to see, I feel like I'm seeing uh, people really sort of splintering off into more private networks. Oh, interesting. Um, niche, yeah, niche networks? Yeah, or? like uh, the Paths of the World or Swipe or uh, yeah. you know, Yellow or, you know, where they really want to get into a network where, I mean, for me, whether I like some of the software or not, there's times when I have something I want to share, but I really want to share it to the people I absolutely know are yeah. in my network and also, you know, are anybody on that in my network on that platform, I'm happy for them to know whatever that is. Whereas yeah. when I think about Facebook and, and I, Twitter, I always just use it as like, here's a piece of information and yes, I feel like yes, sharing yes. it. You know? yeah. uh, I love Instagram because of its visual ability, yeah, beauty, but yeah. it's, it's not really, it doesn't engage you beyond too much. Right, at least right. Not at this moment. But um, in, when I think about Facebook, I always think, well, you know, there's at least 2,000, or LinkedIn even when I think about a post or whatever, I think, I'm like, well, there's at least 2,000 people of my however many thousand. I'm not really sure. I may, I may not even see it because of the algorithm. That's another issue. But or but do I really? I don't know. Do I really feel like they should see this? And it's not because I'm doing something revealing. It's just because I have to think about it even for a moment. Right, and you're and so, sort of building 
you, the world that you want people to let in on, right. you know. And, I, and I'm saying that beyond, because nobody's going back back and being like, okay, you're a close friend and you're an acquaintance. Right. And, I don't, maybe they are. Maybe for, they are. Yeah. I don't think so. But I think. They it, change the algorithm all the time, All too. the time. Yeah. And, I, and it's also because people suddenly realize, like, okay, I'm just being sold. You know, I'm just being yeah. monetized all yes. the time. And that yeah. doesn't feel good. We talked about that for so long that that was coming. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't replace the value of Facebook on a lot of levels. But I'm just saying, I think people are also now really looking for, like, okay, what's the solution where I I am in a very small private safe space. Right. Uh, that will be for those reasons. I, yeah. And and I think I, I feel like so, that's starting so to niche, happen. So niche niche social networks. Yeah. Um cuz I did join the the new one. Um what's it called? Uh, Ello? Hello. Hello. And I got on there and I was like, oh my God, this is exhausting. <laughs> yeah, well, so that's, <laughs> that's always the like, truth of any early thing yeah, also yeah. as well. Um, I think, well, actually, I think that's one of, the, one of the beauties of Instagram was how simple it was yeah, you know, from the um, beginning. I liked Instagram for that reason. I liked Twitter for that mm -hmm. reason. And I, you know, and I still use Facebook a lot, mostly for personal, frankly. Right. Well, I think it's becoming everybody's kind of scrapbook of their life. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. going to be that. Yeah. But, and that's kind of, again, you know, one of the things you think about is like, okay, is this something I want to be as a, I was thinking about this the other night I was at a concert and I was thinking okay I've got these pictures they're okay but like don't put Facebook is it really like the memorable moment of my life right, versus right. like Instagram whatever I'll put it up like some people like it or they won't right you know I love so. when people put on Facebook this is happening now yeah as if you wouldn't believe it because it <laughs> yeah. was so like, like exactly. it, it was so amazing so I, I wanted to jump off to another segment um, which is our um, where do you get your information segment <laughs> I think we drove into a wall there, <laughs> but where where do you uh, as a you know so a, trend, is, a trendmeister? Well, I actually have a, a kind of a multiple ways I get information. Okay. One, I read certain things every day. Uh, like but, like which ones? Well, and, I read Mashable, Tech Crunch, but I also like to read. Uh, so this is the part where I change a little bit. I do something that's kind of random mm -hmm. so I have a lot of random and I know I can't read everything every day so that's yes. why I do this yeah and I have a kind of a random array of things that come into mm -hmm. a single box mm -hmm. and and then I read those more for email as opposed to going out and looking for news and information right, right, that right. way um, I, I do actually watch uh, television certain times of the day um, I go to a huge amount of conferences yes. I'm engaged in a lot of conversations and meetings and then I do something else which I call it's my own personal thing but I call the voyage of discovery mm -hmm. and I set aside an voyage hour of voyage of discovery, discovery. Wait, you know any music for that I or know. sounds oh, yeah. John go ahead. voyage, voyage of, of discovery, discovery. <laughs> I, w I want that for my house. Yeah, dinner time. That would be freaking awesome. <laughs> Pick up your clothes. Exactly. That would be awesome. Exactly. Well, I do have a lot of interest, so that's why it's fun, you know. Yeah. But I and I don't get to do as much as I'd like. I usually do it, and it's like when a quieter time. But I sit with my iPad. And actually. you just and you just. Surf. I just go. Yeah. And I really, I have no idea where I'm going to start. And I usually open something like a Flipboard or some email that I got, yeah. whatever. And I just go. And then I, and I time it for an hour. And at the end of the hour, I am like amazed at what I've learned. I also also read, you know, like a magazine and things like that as well. But I, I find at the end of that hour, it's just been incredible. And sometimes it'll be like I've gone all the way deep into like gossip that I, of people I've never even heard of, like yeah, like the celebrities an hour or whatever. To Buzzfeed. Yeah, or and whatever. then I've come right back up, and I'm some unbelievable medical breakthrough. Right. And that's always great because I always know someone who has whatever that thing is that they've just. And I'm like, oh right, my god, this right. would be so important for so and so, you know. And so and. Then and then sometimes I'm just reading about like a science thing or but it, you know, all, it, it all it all feeds, comes together yeah it and all feeds I, so I, I do really love, love doing it. I mean the, the, to me especially again being working family and all this stuff one of my favorite things to do on vacation is that right it's exactly. just that's wi-fi true. and sit back with the ipod uh, ipad and just go so you do your and voice? how many yeah. tabs are open before it crashes well, that, that's <laughs> always all, all the time. Time. <laughs> that is so bad sometimes i look back i can't even believe that i stuff some of those tabs or why my computer doesn't work or i'm cursing like computer out yeah or the or the, like, well, or maybe the, you should the look fan at tabs. The, yeah the fan oh, comes my, up it's so hot yeah like, my fan so comes hot. up all the time but also i think to my Myself, I'll come back to that. I'll come back to that. Or Me I better remember too. that because that too. that's like the life changing thing that's going to make that. That is a technology you know? I'd love to have. And I know people use certain technologies yes. for that. 
like some people love Evernote for that. Yeah, I, that's, that's how I use Evernote. I, I send things to folders. Lo- yeah, and that's great. And I've just started to set them up again because unfortunately I had two not so great experiences with Evernote in the early days. And I lost some things. So I was very paranoid. Your notebooks were stolen. They just disappeared. You yeah. know? And Brian, our, our mutual friend, is always yeah. like, it's much better now. Okay. So, but I still <laughs> find, and also not everyone uses the same platform. So when you're yes. sharing something that you're working on with somebody, it's like, really? Oh, you're on this and you're on this. And you have the so cloud. Many. They're called the cloud wars. Cloud yeah. wars. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, exactly. It's like, oh, gosh. But uh, so I still feel like I haven't quite mastered that. So I do. My new thing now is like, let's be realistic. You're not going to get back to that. So if you want to read it. like it's, And I feel it's much more productive. Do right? you say it out loud? Because I, yeah, I, oh, I say it in my head. I'm probably. like, you're lying to yourself right totally. now. Totally. Yeah. Like, you're going to eat that piece of cake. You know you're going to eat that piece. You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. So I, but I just realized also I feel more productive right, if right. I've actually taken care of it. That's right. just like a time management thing Are you well. a list maker? or? I mean, oh, yeah. Of course. List maker, note taker, like every version But do of you that. have stuff everywhere? Or are you really... Like, if I went into your home office right now, would it be organized? Um, Well, it actually has evolved from many thousands of stickies and small pieces of paper to pretty much on the device. And the device now shares it. So I feel like, okay, somewhere, or I can email myself, but I don't really feel the need to do that anymore. But I have done that many times. But then I was like, I'm not going to go home and like search for all the emails I sent myself. Like, you know, so I try to do it more around, let's say, if I'm at a conference, these are my notes from that conference. And the other thing I do is I try to send them out as unproofed and as a mess as they may be to whoever I'm sharing them with because that otherwise with no judgment with no, no judgment, judgment. I'm yeah. just like here's here's kind of what I wrote and sometimes I look back and I wrote like some word that was like well, doesn't doesn't really help anybody else but, like I don't even know why I wrote it <laughs> yeah. it's just like it's like doodling you know it's stream like, of oh, consciousness yes yeah. Yeah, <laughs> glory totally of consciousness. and that's all it is yeah what, yeah. what was that point <laughs> I, I um, do I remember high school falling asleep and then waking up at the end of class and literally I couldn't I was writing right. but it's not words right exactly <laughs> you know I was channeling but I do I, I will say that all also, and I don't know if you operate this way, but I have really finally because of that, because yes. I, I do this thing in my mind a lot where I go, what's the keyword, right? Because if I know the keyword, right. and the keyword yes. might be the name of the person, it might be the, the thing I was reading, so that I can at least know that somehow I can probably get back there. And I would say 90... 95% of the time I get back. You if find, I need to go back thing. to it, I can get back to it because I've sort of done this keyword thing in my mind about right. how I found that, why I found that. Right. You know, spelling can affect that a little bit, but like I was trying to... Yeah, I think you're you right. Know. I think I do so, I do search like that. So it, it, do you find I yourself... Try, I mean, I try to retain it that way too in order to find it right, since it's not all it. in one place and yeah. there isn't really... I'm not good at that retaining. <laughs> oh, well, I don't. I don't. <laughs> well, what do you find for... you got to use luminosity. I feel like oh, I'm yes. getting paid for that. But yeah, not, but, but do, you, do you do it <laughs> every day i do it i do it about three times a week do you really i do so i love luminosity, it though. in case you guys don't know it's a it's a site where they have brain teasers basically yeah, and it's supposed games. to enhance your have you noticed a change since you've done it like, well do according you... to the thing and yeah i'm a little better at the games but i can't say <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know if yeah. i'm uh, if i my brain has increased in any capacity but um i do see though when you're looking at a certain game and there's other games you know yeah. concentration or whatever it's like and I see myself getting better at that, and I assume that that means yeah, I now. can concentrate a little bit better now yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, I think you know everyone always teases me about like the ultimate multitasker, but yeah. I've really come to realize that like that just really is not a great trend because it doesn't right. really it doesn't pay work. Off. You don't you get know, you, you don't doesn't. get stuff done. Yeah. Or yeah. you go, wow, I just the guy just said the most amazing thing, and, and I, I missed was, it. I wasn't even listening. I missed it. That's why I can't do audiobooks yeah. because I'm in my car. I've already like missed a chapter. Because I was thinking about tomorrow. Right. Or I used to do them on planes and I'd fall asleep and I'd wake up and I'd be like, the how book did we get the here? Yeah. How did we get here? And they're like, oh, I really have to go back. And to- that's how I ran the country for the last eight years. <laughs> no, of exactly. everything I just told you, here is the answer it's to. It's so uh, true. There's, there's one I'm a huge fan of somebody named Simon Sinek who had these huge oh, Simon TED Sinek. Okay. So B- uh, his- a big writer? Well, he's now got two books. Okay. And this is sec- I think it's two. Si- Simon Sinek? Sinek. S-I-N-E-K. Okay. And this is a book called Leaders Eat Last. Okay. And I, I love this book. It's great. It's just, and I kept listening to it on a plane, listening to it on a plane. I think it took me like, uh, I don't know, two months to get <laughs> To re-listen to it. <laughs> just so I had to re-listen in. to it. I didn't want to miss a word. You know, right, I'm going right. back to the do, same place. Do you feel like when you're doing that, because I always feel like, okay, this is good for me. Right. Force myself to do it. Yes. It's not like I'm enjoying it, but I, you know. It depends. I, I love books that are, 
I love books about empowerment, about mm -hmm. especially personal business empowerment. I, yeah. I love those. Because that's, that's one of your connector roles. Yes. Is, so that leads into a question I was going to ask you, which is do you find yourself giving your clients the same advice, like all of them? Are we at this moment in time where you feel like they all need to be thinking in a certain way or moving in a certain yeah, way? Yeah, I, I generally, that's a trend. I uh, usually yeah. figure out certain trends that usually apply to most of them. Um, but I also find that some of them are still at a different level where they have to do other things in order to be able to even take advantage of a trend. You know, right. and their so company isn't there. Isn't there. Or right. I tell them to skip certain things and just go further to ahead in order to hit, to hit that to hit that space. Uh, so it just depends. Yeah, both. I'd say both. But um, I think also I've really been involved in some personal empowerment ideas that we're, we're um, prototyping and beta testing, and so I'm excited about that. So can you share any of those things with us? Or is there um, anything yeah. that you want the audience to go and check out that year? Well, one of them, I, I, yeah, there's a few of them, actually. The first thing that, uh, and uh, this is uh, Brent Bushnell. Do you know Brent at all? Well, I know the Bushnells. Okay. So, so Noah Bushnell and Brent Bushnell, but they started, they were Atari. Yeah, Brent and is then, Nolan's son. Right, and then... Um, uh, you, Nolan, Chuck E. Cheese, Chuck e. Cheese's, you and wink. then also those great restaurants. Right. You, you wink. wink. You Wink was this great restaurant. You you order everything from you know tablet on the on the oh, table perfect. and and just do your credit card and but it had games and so this good. is before iPads were and everywhere. I think Nolan would tell originally when I got, um, first was involved with uh, You Wink because I was on the board was I about women Ewing. and socialization at restaurants and game playing, which he felt was like not strong, uh, that strong at the time. They right. started it for, and then everybody, of course, went. I, his family. I loved it because it was like my husband and I, we have a teenage stepchildren, and so he could bring them and they could just be doing the game and we could actually have date night. Right. But at the same so table. Fun. So fun. You know, now you do it with an iPad. Completely. You know, so it's so interesting. And it also had the early advance uh, ordering and stuff like that. You could yeah, like order you when order you wanted and order right. what you want. Right. I loved that. I love when you don't really have to deal with humans. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like people, I think but you're in revealing the, a lot about well, yourself. Well, in the more. services industry, though, it's so, you know so what I mean? True. Like so true. who you're going to get. You so know, true. That kind of thing. All right. So, so, so Brent yes. Ed, uh, is, uh, is the founder or co founder, I believe, with um, somebody named Eric. I'm not sure of the titles, but anyway, it's called Two Bit Circus Steam Carnival. And oh, you're it, telling me about this. So okay. this is all about getting, you know, creating these incredible inventions and having people come in a carnival, retro-like, fun circus environment to get kids involved in STEAM, which Love is science, it. technology, engineering, arts, and math for people they don't know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's coming up. Um, it's going to be in the Port of Los Angeles on the 25th and 26th. But the idea is that it will tour. Octo October? October. Oh, I want to go. Yes. Okay. Oh, you should come, definitely. October 25th and 26th. Okay. Yep. I'm writing that down, ladies and gentlemen. And then on October 22nd, <laughs> there's actually, they also launched alongside of it, a Steam Powered, which is their nonprofit, to raise money alongside of the carnival uh, idea to uh for different programs supporting STEAM. So that's also in the Port of Los Angeles on October 22nd. So I'm excited about that. And then I have uh, two friends who I'm helping. Uh, These are really a personal friend thing. Mm -hmm. uh, one's name is Kelly Walden, and the other's name is Robin Fisher Roffer. And she's a leading sort of personal brand person, but she also works with large brands, incredible branding, and just uh, kind of out of the box. So she would kill me for, she, she has a book called Make a Name for Yourself. And it's all about being able to describe the person the way they want you to. Oh, that's so great. So she's, I think Making she's a digital a brand strategist. Okay. Yeah, it's a and great what's her book. last name? Fisher and Fisher. then Roffer. Okay. -F 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 Making a name for yourself. Okay. Make a name for yourself. And so they're doing something together, which is a kind of a dream it, do it challenge. And, and if you look back at research, there's a lot of research about how many extraordinary ideas that became films, television, whatever, but a lot of companies, and a huge amount of inventions came from dreams. Oh. So technology, uh, you so know. People waking up and remembering having something. Having this dream, okay. exactly. So the idea is that Kelly is a dream specialist, and Robin is a, a branding specialist. They're both like top of their field. Wow. And so Kelly will help you figure out a manifest. A lot of people know what their dream is. They just have no idea what to do with it. Um, and you may not know what it is. If you don't, that's okay, too. Right. And then Robin, so that's a 12-week uh, teleseminar where the second uh, part of it will be Robin helping you figure out how do you turn that into what's your mission, vision, value, proposition, what's the so name, more the what's the brand, and how do you make it into things. a brand or a company or how an idea, cool. whatever you want it to be. So that's another one that I'm working on as a friend. And then I'm, I'm uh, about to launch something that is kind of my – 
what it's a kind of a combination of uh, voyage of discovery and you know not really thinking I should jump into the blog world at mm -hmm. some point. So it is really about uh, a lot of people I know have incredible passion points. Mm -hmm. And you know, if I asked you, what are you passionate about? And you might say horses, and you might say growing sleeping. roses. Sleeping is great. <laughs> Sleeping would be great. Will you guess curate this again? Yes. <laughs> so um, it's called Weekly Dive. And it is a very deep dive into a person's personal passion for that week. So, oh, I love that. So That's if I great. asked you about, like, what do you do about sleeping? You'd say, well, these are the sites I go to. These are the tips I have. These are the, right. it might be videos, images, whatever. So, like, whatever. almost like graduate school on a topic in a, in a conversation. Correct. Like, right. really, that I love that. Exactly. That's so then I have a whole idea. plan for that. So that's coming. I hope, I've been trying to launch in the next month, but you know how that goes. Yeah. Um, and, and you're traveling all the time. Uh, traveling a lot. And I'm about to go to the summit, the web summit in Dublin, which I think is going to be really exciting and fun. Yeah. Well, could you, um, I, we have to wrap up soon, but could you name a few summits and conferences that you think people should absolutely go to, like think, places where you just learn so much? It really depends on your business. Yeah. But in advertising and that sort of tech, yeah. I think ad tech is great. And it, what's really great about ad tech is the uh, sort of organized seminars that they do where they'll talk about a topic in deep, deep deep, deep way from sort of email functionality right, real updated, serious experts. everything to real yeah, experts the next one is November first it's first, first week of November yeah, in and New I'm York. actually going to be hosting the keynotes oh great so I'll be so there this is the first time I'm missing it in a while because I'm going to the web summit oh, okay, in, which right, I hear in is Dublin. great but I'm okay. sort of I, it's Torn. my two favorites yeah <laughs> okay uh, it's and it's just called there. the web summit in Dublin it's called okay. yeah it's, I think so it's the okay. web summit but it's in Dublin and I last week I went to my probably my second or third favorite conference which is a, a gentleman named Simon Mainwaring who's also a fantastic branding guy you should have him on he's fantastic okay. and he it's all about sort of thinking about uh sort of me to we and then how does technology fit into that and they had like the guy from ibm talking about how ibm works today work out loud it was fantastic but also people talking about corporate social responsibility and sustainability and who's doing it right and who's doing it you know sort of really thinking about it for the future and and anyway, it's called We First, and that's also a great book, Brand Summit. I just love it because it really gets you to think about, like, how am I going to utilize tech to really move the world forward? How does it change the world? Like, right. this so is a could, lot of great stuff. You could still do, because I always worry about this, uh, being in marketing and advertising and tech, like, how am I bettering the world? I know I'm teaching, which is great. I know I'm a nice person, but how am I bettering the world? So events like that help really you take great. what you're doing and shape them for social good. For sure. Um, and do you think that social good is hot now because we're better people than we were before? Is it because millennials love social good? Or I is it just because it's... You I know. think it's a, it's 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 probably the topic of a whole other show, but it's a yeah. combination of a lot of points of consciousness reaching this this kind of place of like we have to do something, and I right. don't think it's like necessarily just a fad. Yeah. It's going to be. It is it's here. The, I it's mean, here you to look stay. at like Unilever and yeah. how committed they are, and you yeah. just you know we need more companies. We need we need everybody thinking about this because we need to solve these problems, and a lot of it may come from technology, but we need to solve the problems. Right, right. And they're big. Right. And, uh, and we have so, a lot of big brains in. In uh, our world, and we have a lot of technology power that can help us solve it. That are you know maybe bigger than our brains, good and bad. That has all, you know different <laughs> conversation. But um, and then I just think I think it's always good to go to at least one thought leadership that you just go for yourself. That's not business related. It, you it will be business related, but it okay. could be as something as like a big Omaha. It could be uh, something in like TechCrunch or something where it's like I'm really just going. I don't know if I have a company to launch, I, but I just want to go and hear what other people are doing and think. Ted. You know, you could just, I want to go and think yeah. about something. You just want to learn Ideas about something. Institute. Yeah. I love that idea. So, like, once a year, make sure you go do something just like that. Just go do something like that. Right. I think it's really important. And you, your agenda is just, I really want to open my mind. I want to absorb. I want to meet people from different walks. Maybe they'll be new for my a new vertical for my business that my tech would work for. Maybe I could develop something it for come, that. Something will come from completely. it. Completely. And la lastly, where are you speaking next so we could come and, and see you? Digital Hollywood. Digital actually. Hollywood. Okay. So, next week in Los Angeles. <laughs> Los Angeles. And the, the about women entrepreneurs. I women believe. entrepreneurs. So. Okay. Go. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. Well, Liz Heller, oh. the alchemist, I cannot thank you enough for oh, you. for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. So, ma so many great books. You told us about so many great ideas. And again, the rest of our audience is now additionally connected to the most connected yes, person absolutely. in the world. And I do see they're all writing checks. That's the best part. It's a very handsome audience today. <laughs> well, I won the a, lottery. This yeah, is right. Lori Schwartz coming to you from the not as hot as it has been, Hollywood, California with tech trends impacting your business. So join us again on our fabulous UBN network. And Liz Heller, thank you again thank you. for being a fantastic guest. Bye, everybody.
Come back and see us again real soon. <laughs> In the future, Talk Radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life. From Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at UBN Radio.